Hey everybody, this is the fourth here, and in this video, I will be showing you how to make this screech sound here. So I've gotten a lot of requests on how to make this screech, and now I've finally had a chance to uh, sit down and record this tutorial for you guys. So I made this screech sound using Citrus. Uh, you might be able to recreate it or get something similar in other FM synthesizers, but you will have to be using a synthesizer that does do FM synthesis, uh, because it is a big part of how I made the sound. So if you're using Citrus, the first thing you want to do is load up the default preset. And then you want to set operator 1 to be a saw wave. And set the frequency ratio to 8. So it should sound uh, like this at this point. And so you can hear it's pretty high pitched, and also, um, you know, there's a lot of aliasing going on in the sound. So what I've done is I've set the oversampling to eight times, um, and you can see the render is also set to eight times. You don't have to do this; uh, it can cause it to use more CPU. So if this ends up using too much CPU, you can try uh, doing four times or even just two times, uh, but it, it will make it sound better, uh, as you can hear. And then um, also I will take the pitch all the way down on the main panel, that main pitch. So it should sound uh, like this. And now what you want to do is add a pitch envelope to operator 1. So I'm going to the pitch envelope. And basically you want to recreate uh, this kind of a shape. So to do that I'm going to first turn on the envelope and take this point up to here. Um, and then the second point you want all the way down. And you want it about three uh, little lines away from the left side. And I set it at about 65% tension. Uh, so you know, if you, if you want to know how much tension, you look up here and then you adjust it and I had that at 65%. Um, but you, you can play around with that, it'll make it sound a little bit different. Uh, and actually this shape is kind of a lie because you can see you know, I played around with these and uh, I actually just made it all the way flat. So uh, you can just have it flat after that point. And I'm going to delete this uh, release tail and that just, because if you can hear if I have it on and I play a note, you know, it kind of sustains around, and if I delete that, it will just stop as soon as I release the note. Um, and then last thing you want to do related to this pitch envelope is turn the pitch envelope amount, which is this knob here. Uh, you just want to turn that all the way up. And now it should sound something like this. So now the next thing you want to do is in the FM matrix, you want to modulate operator 1 uh, by operator 2. And I've set that to about 50% in the original sound. And I also set the frequency ratio to 8 uh, on operator 2. So operator 2's frequency ratio should be 8. And then the shape of the waveform is a triangle. So I set uh, this slider here to 25%. You could also just uh, right click and select triangle uh, 
but then I had this disabled. I don't know if that will make a difference or not, but I did have it disabled. And now it should sound like this. And so you can hear that it's already kind of sounding, um, you know, a little bit vocally, that vocal type sound that the original Screech had. And then there are two more things you want to do with Operator 2. And um, this is mostly for automation. So you want to do uh, pitch mod Y and uh, set it up to look like this. So just drag you know, the right point all the way up and the left point all the way down. And then the next thing you want to do is volume uh, mod X and just drag the left point all the way down. So um, what this does is it just routes the volume to the X mod on the main panel and the pitch to the Y mod on the main panel. Um, and so you can see if I play the sound, Yeah, I can kind of uh, change how the sound sounds at that point just by uh, playing around with this matrix. And uh, I use that a lot in the song uh, to actually, you know, get this kind of sound going on. So after that, you want to uh, go to operator three. And I modulated operator 2 uh, by operator 3 just by about 10%. And if you want um, you know, a specific reading, again, you can look up at the tips bar, and you can ad just adjust that until it's at um, about 10%. And then uh, operator 3, I left it as a sine wave, and I set it to a frequency ratio of just 1. And you can hear what that does is it just kind of adds a, a really fast pitch LFO, basically. So that basically just causes a really fast tremolo effect. And that's um, really important to getting the rawness of the sound. Uh, so it should be sounding like this now. And uh, the note that I was playing this screech on in the song is uh, A4. So that's uh, right there. Um, so yeah, but uh, you can play it on whatever notes you want. You, know, you could even use this to make a melody if you wanted to. Uh, so that's pretty nice. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the um, you know foundation of the sound. You can hear if I kind of uh, play around with adjusting the X mod, uh, it'll really you know change how the waveform talks, I guess. And then uh, the pitch effect is just changing the Y mod, so. So that's pretty much the foundation, um, but I will be walking you through the full sound in case you really like uh, how the full sound sounds. But anything after this point you can kind of, uh, you know, be more creative with if you want it to sound a little bit different. Uh, so the next thing I did is I just turned the effects on operator 1 all the way up. And uh, that's really just to get the chorus sound. And I left... Uh, the chorus order to 4. I left the chorus depth alone, uh, but the chorus speed... I set to about 25%. And then I left the chorus delay, the chorus spread, and the chorus cross alone as well. Uh, but I reduced the volume a fair amount. Uh, to about minus 25% or so. Uh, but again, you know, you can just play around with that. And so 
you know, that just adds a chorus effect to it. Uh, it gives it a little bit of stereo. You can listen to the chorus effect on its own if I turn this off. Uh, but more important than that, I turned on the unison. Uh, so I set it to be three voices. I left the pan and the volume alone. Um, but I set the pitch up to about 79%. Um, and that just gives it a bit more of a raw sound. So I set that at about 79% and left the rest alone. So after I did all that, um, I did a few more things in the mixer. Uh, so I just, you know, routed that through a mixer track. And I widened the stereo sum. You know, how much you widen it is uh, up to you. It's up to the mix. It's up to how wide you want the sound to be. And then the next thing I did was... Um, I high passed the sound. Uh, I used Fruity uh, Love Filter, but you can use you know whatever uh, you want. You could use an EQ instead. Um, but I put the Love Filter on, uh, set to the default preset, and I kept it as a state variable filter. But I turned the low all the way down and the high all the way up. And um, yeah, then I played with the cutoff a little bit to get it where I wanted it to be. Uh, you could also play with the uh, filter mode to filter it off more or less sharply. But yeah, I set the cutoff and uh, I had it sounding about like this. If you If you want more of the lower frequencies, that's definitely fine. You can hear that when it's down like this, it filters out, you know, like all of those low frequencies. Which is what I wanted personally, but you don't have to do that. So after the Fruity Love Filter, or after the High Pass, I added a Fruity Phaser. So I'm not going to walk through the phaser specifically, uh, but basically I used it to smooth up the sound a little bit. And um, if you want the specific settings, you can pause the video now and just copy them down because it does list uh, the specific values for each uh, different option. So I use this. Uh, you can pause the video now if you want to copy that specifically. Um, but it, it just smoothed it up a little bit. And added a little bit more stereo, uh, kind of changed the stereo a little bit. And then after that, I distorted it with the Fruity Fast Distortion. And I actually left the Fruity Fast Distortion at its default settings. Um, but, you know, you could play around with them if you wanted to. Uh, so it's a little bit loud now. I'm going to turn that down a little bit. So then after the Fruity Fast Distortion, I added a... Uh, bit Crusher. This is just a free Bit Crusher plugin that I use. Um, I'll have a link to where you can download that in the description. And all I did with that was I changed the bit depth to um, two bits. And the Bit Crusher just uh, changes the character of the sound a little bit. Um, you can hear it better if I play lower uh, amounts of that X. Um, so it, it just changes the character of the sound a little bit. And there is one thing I forgot uh, that I did with Citrus still. And that's, I turned on the EQ on the main panel. I turned it to out plus effects, and I just adjusted this middle one. 
and set it to be at 7.2 decibels. Um, and again, you can see that up here when you adjust it. Uh, yeah, 7.2. And that's pretty much it, other than um, mixing effects. In the original one, I had some, uh, you know, just another EQ to mix it into the song. And I also routed it through um, my reverb send. Uh, which I, I added quite a bit of reverb uh, doing that. Um, but you know, that's all about mixing. You could use uh, whatever reverb at whatever amount you wanted. And you could also um, not use these different effects as much. It just uh, depends on what sound you're going for. But um, I'm going to replace this screech with the one I've just created. and route um, this to the modulation I had. So when I play it in the playlist uh, and have that modulation of the X and the Y, it should sound something like this. So yeah, that's how I made this great sound um, using Citrus. Hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully you'll be able to you know, recreate it pretty well after watching this. Uh, if you want to, you can download this um, this whole project file actually on the Beat School forum. So I'll have a link to that in the description as well. But yeah, hopefully that was helpful and I'll see you in the next video.